morning. It's Phil from Snowworks here for our third live webinar and welcome everybody. As you can see, it's another wonderful day. Can't ski, but we can talk about it and we love talking about it at Snowworks. Absolutely love talking about it. So I um, hope you're enjoying the webinars. The first one was on skiing open, the second on snow displacement and today's webinar is focus which is seriously important in all mountain skiing. Seriously, seriously, seriously important. I remember back from my younger days, uh, another coach called John Shedden, who I've spoken about before. John used to run Snow Sports England, an amazing guy, an amazing coach. If you don't know him, Google him, read his books, absolutely fantastic. And I remember something John writing in his first book, which was called, or his second or third book, I can't remember which one. The book was called Developing Your Skill. I remember reading that and remember the one of the opening paragraphs vividly, that very first lesson that you take when you're skiing, the very first lesson on snow and you're about to go down and the instructor notices that you're looking down at the snow. And he says, don't look down, look up. So you immediately take your vision off the snow and look ahead. Do you remember that? I remember it vividly and I, I even remember teaching it. But that's not the answer. The answer is look down. The answer is look down and look ahead and look to the left and look to the right. The answer is gather as much information as you possibly can in order to perform. Now, if you don't believe me, just whilst you're walking around the house, if you're in the garden and you're walking around or you walk around the house, have a think about where your vision is and you will notice it, it skits around massively quickly, it goes onto the floor, goes into the distance, goes to the right, goes to the left, floor, up, right, left, floor, up, right, left. Your eyes skit around constantly especially when the conditions get quite difficult, like walking up the stairs or walking down the stairs. Just try it. No. <laughs> On second thoughts, don't try it because it's really scary. So we've got something here which is, there, there's two things. So often we just think it's just about eyes, but it's not just about eyes. You can see something but you've also got to process what you see. So the brain really has to come in here. Because often we may see something, but the brain may not process it. So we've got to see and then process it. Now, when you see something, what will happen? The brain will recognize what you've seen and then through all your experiences in the past, which are logged back in the memory banks, the brain will be able to produce an action. And this is happening at light speed all the time. See something, produce an action. See something, produce an action. See something, produce an action. But if you don't see it, then the brain cannot retrieve information in which to produce an action. And that's absolutely key. Now we might take that for granted, but it's not. Quite often we see information but do not process it because our mind is taken up with something else. Now if you don't believe me, a, an experiment that has taken place numerous times where the experimenter or the person who is running the experiment has gone up to a complete stranger in the street to ask for directions. Stranger, the stranger stops, looks up and starts to give directions. Whilst that stranger is in the middle of giving directions, two workmen with a door, wooden door that you can't see through, walk between the two people and stop to tie up a shoelace or something, something like that. Stop for 30 seconds. And the, the person who's giving the directions is sort of doing this, and the guy says, oh, sorry, excuse me, and they move on. In between that time where they stopped with the door, the person that was asking for directions has changed. It's a completely different person. Different clothes, may now have a beard where it didn't have before, may have been wearing glasses. Not even similar, completely different. Just standing there waiting for directions. 90% of the time, the person giving directions just carries on giving the directions and hasn't even noticed that the person that they're talking to is a different person. How bizarre. You don't believe me? Look it up. It's absolutely true. So, often we just don't process the information that we're seeing. Okay, so that's really very, very important. Now, I'm going to move on to some of the aspects about focus, but before I do that, vision, as I said, is really important. So, goggles or sunglasses, but we prefer goggles, 
uh, one of the most important things that you can have. So you mustn't cut back on your goals. No point spending a thousand, fifteen hundred pounds on a ski holiday, hotel, flights, transfers, ski lessons, coaching, ski equipment, and then we arrive with a five pound pair of goggles that we bought 10 years ago. It's a complete waste of money. So you've got to get yourself a decent pair of goggles. And now a quick story, um, back when I was a bit younger, probably 10, 15 years ago, I remember running a lesson in limited visibility, poor visibility. Some people say bad visibility. I try to these days just call it limited visibility rather than, or low visibility rather than bad visibility. I was given a lesson and I said to the group, the first thing that they said to me when we arrived is, Phil, we can't see. And I said, well, you can see, let's get that straight. You can see me, can you see the chairlift? Yes. Can you see the piece marks on the side? Yes. Okay, can you see that lump down there? 15 meters down the slope. And some of the group said yes, and one girl in the group said, no, I can't see that. I said, you've got to be able to see it. It's as clear as day, 15 meters down on the slope there. No, couldn't see it. Okay, came back a little bit, just to the right. Can you see those tracks, those carved tracks in the snow? Can you see those two clean carved tracks? Some of the group, yes, this one girl, no, can't see that. I said, you've got, to, you've got to be able to see it. There's me thinking that she had just decided she didn't want to ski in bad visibility. I said, so, okay, come back a bit closer. Can you see that two meters across to the left, just there, that lump? No, I can't see that. I said, give me your goggles. Took her goggles, gave her mine, put her goggles on, couldn't see a thing. <laughs> Steamed up, covered in scratches, Absolute waste of time, complete waste of time. Luckily, as always, I have spare goggles in my backpack. Now, I normally, during the winter, ski around with a minimum of two pairs of goggles, sometimes three pairs of goggles, especially if it's snowing heavily. Two or three sets of goggles, so I can just switch them over as need be. Because I know, one, for safety, and two, for performance, I need to see as much as I possibly can. The key is not what you can't see, the key is what you can see, and that's absolutely key. Every time you go out, what can you see? Now, you may think focus is easy, but it's not. It's a skill that we have to develop. A lot of the time, people just develop their focusing skills naturally just from going skiing and all the different types of terrain, but sometimes they don't. So I'm gonna give a, a couple of key things here about focus, so you can start to think about whether you need to develop your focusing skills. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is near and far focus. Near and far focus. So both are useful, but they're a disaster if we have them the wrong way around. So far focus is used for safety, route finding, looking at hazards, following the instructor, where's my instructor going? Okay. Drops, snow texture, all sorts of things in the distance. Route finding. Near focus is for what you're about to ski over. Now for most intermediate skiers, and this is why they don't like bad visibility and when it's snowing, they're most of the time using a far focus, a focus into the future, because they're looking at the instructor, they're looking at the peace markers, they're looking at where they're going. Now on a normal clear day, that's fine. But when the snow comes in and the terrain starts to get a little bit icy, a little bit bumpy, a little bit soft snow, then we've got to see that. And if you don't see it, it's gonna trip you over. You've got to see that information right in front of you. So we have to pull our focus back. Now we've had lots of guests on our courses that have absolutely transformed their skiing on days of poor visibility or, or limited visibility. Transformed just by going from a far focus to a near focus. Think about it. On a clear sunny day, you can see everything. But if you have the same focus when it's cloudy, you're just looking into white cloud. What's the point of that? You're not seeing anything. What can you see? What can you see? That's absolutely key. Now, so that's far and near focus. So now I decided to film everybody off piece skiing. And we were in quite demanding conditions. They had to be put through their paces. And so I had a few tumbles along the way, not myself personally, um, the group. And I had a different group every day. It was about five or six groups uh, through the course of the week. And as I was starting to put this video together, I thought I'd grab all the tumbles, all the falls. Every time somebody had a fall, I'll pull it out so I could get um, a film 
just a photo montage, a montage of all the falls, and then show that in, that in the evening. Nobody was hurt. Um, and as I was putting this montage together, I started to notice nobody fell over for no reason. Not a single person the whole week. There was always a reason. And that reason was a distraction. Okay, remember when we were skiing off piece and we're skiing in quite difficult conditions. So we needed to be gathering information about what we're skiing over. Now, every time somebody, just before somebody fell over, they were distracted. Their vision went from being near to being far. So they didn't see what they were about to ski over. Didn't see it. Boom! Crash. Now, could have been me filming. A lot of times it was me filming and people would just glance up and look at me. It was another skier traversing lower down and they'd glance up and look at the other skier. It was a hazard that they glanced up to have a look. It might have been somebody, the group standing there lower down that they glanced up to have a look. Every single time, without fail, that, that person was distracted. So remember this, you rarely walk in around your house trip over. Rarely. When was the last time you went shopping and you tripped over? Okay, it happens, but you will notice when skiing, every time you lose balance, lose control, trip over, it's because you've lost your focus. Okay, it's gone too far into the future rather than on the now moment. Don't forget I said earlier that distance focus is very, very useful. So we have to get used to changing our focus. It can be like a spotlight. Wide, a lot of information. Narrow, a little bit of information. Wide, narrow. Wide, narrow. Okay, change your focus, use it as a spotlight. Know when to go wide and when to go narrow. Now, if you're skiing in very difficult conditions like bumps, which are always changing, or off piece which is changing, and you go wide and glance head for a reasonable length of time, the likelihood is going to lose balance, trip over, you're going to ski into something you can't see. And if you cannot see it, if you haven't seen it, how can your brain retrieve the response that is needed? It can't, it's not seen it. Okay, so you need to know when to glance ahead, look at the distance, you need to know when to stop. Now in very difficult conditions, we often, I would stop, look at the terrain, look at the route finding, I would do my route finding whilst I'm not skiing. Okay, know where I'm going, set off, it's a demanding slope, the terrain is seriously variable, so I need to be working with the terrain, I need to see every change of terrain possible. And then every now and again I can just use my periphery rather than my central vision to see where I'm going. I might glance up quickly because I've noticed there is a little bit of delay. So as long as I've seen the information I can glance up quickly and my brain will still retrieve the response. I've seen the information and I can glance back down to get the next bit of information. There's a lovely story here from Kung Fu Panda. So for those Kung Fu Panda addicts, his quest to find the dragon scroll and become the great warrior. And he was struggling with this quest. So he went to, it was the turtle, whose name I can't quite remember. It's not Shifu, Ugwe, Master Ugwe it is. So he went to Master Ugwe, he said, Master Ugwe, I am struggling. Um, and Master Ugwe stood there very calmly. He said, ah, Po, this, that, thinking this, thinking that it's too much. Just focus on the now. Remember, the future is a mystery. The past is history, but now is a gift. That is why it is called the present. And I've always remembered that. How useful is that quote? How useful is that? Which means, yes, the future is a mystery. Might be nice to have an idea where we're going, and in skiing, of course, safety off piece, we've got to have a big idea, okay? But we also need to be coping with the now moment. You might say that's the same in everyday life. Yes, get up in the morning and 
what am I going to do today? What, what is the now moment going to give me? And enjoy that now moment. We enjoy the now moment in skiing, but for safety reasons, we're also on the future as well. Okay, so just to bear that in mind. Okay, so that's, that's narrow and wide. Now there's a different type of focus as well. So that's the amount of information we take in, a lot or a little, far or near, okay, future or now. We've also got the direction of our focus, whether it's internal inside of us or external, which brings us to a particular model that we use in skiing, which gives us four different types of concentration. Now, just bear with me a little bit. I'm just going to turn that round, pull in my board. So we've got here is the width, wide and narrow wide and narrow focus and then we've got the direction of focus internal and external okay if you can see that so narrow wide external internal which gives us four different types of focus four different types one narrow internal two wide internal, three wide external and four narrow external. Narrow internal, narrow external, wide internal, wide external. Now that is a model from a gentleman called Robert Nidifer who was a martial arts expert and it's called Nidifer's Attentional Styles. You can see it on our website all our coaches are familiar with it and we all use it. Now what Nidifer said is each style of each style, each of the four styles is incredibly useful. So let me just turn that around a little bit. Each style is very, very useful. But in the wrong situation, it's also a disaster. And Nidifer also said that many people are stuck in one style of focus. They haven't got used to changing their focus. For example, a, let's take a wide a wide internal a wide internal that's a lot of information not going to be able to manage the snow too steep too icy i'm going to trip over i'm going to fall over i don't ski very well got people watching me peer group pressure what do i look like am i skiing well enough are my feet oh, there's so much information going on here you just can't ski um, it could also be somebody that over analyzes information what we call paralysis by analysis okay how much pressure do you need on my ski how much should I be extending my leg? How long should I hold the pressure for? When do I use rotation? How much should I edge my skis? At what part of the turn should I be edging my skis? Do I increase the edges, release the edges? Just goes on and on. Again, that can be useful in a training situation where you're training. But skiing in a mountain environment where things are constantly changing, analysis leads to paralysis. So it can be very detrimental. And then we've got the other focus Okay, we've got someone with a very narrow external, which we've also spoken about already, can be great. A na narrow external, but don't get near that person. If, that's, if they're narrow external all the time, stay well away from them. They will ski into you without seeing you. They will just cut across the slope into another turn right in front of you. You go, whoa, where did you come from? And they say, well, and when you stop, when they stop and you go over to them and say, did you not see me? They will say, no, I didn't see you at all. Okay, they're stuck in a narrow external. Okay, um, wide external. Again, somebody who's so aware of everything around them that they can't actually concentrate on the now moment, what's happening to them. So just keep losing their balance, keep tripping over, keep hitting stuff, hitting ice they didn't see, hitting a bump that they didn't see. You know, I've said this, I've seen people ski off things that they've not seen. Ski into a hollow, a massive hollow. Did you not see that hollow? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hit something they didn't see, skin to a peace marker. Seen people skin to peace markers that they didn't see. We've seen everything over the years, believe you me. So you've got to try to recognize whether you're stuck in one of these focuses. Now they're all useful at the right time. You arrive at an off piece route, wide, external. Just gather information, where am I going? What's the snow texture like? What's the slope like? Where's the exit route for the off piece? Where are we gonna see? Where's the safe? Um, safe place to stop. What about the hazards? Where is it convex? What's the where 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 is the uh, terrain? Where are the terrain traps? 
So you're gathering information and then bring it internal. Right, a game plan. What am I going to do? Where am I going to stop? Okay, what sort of speed am I going to ski at? Which terrain, which line is the safest line that I'm going to take? Okay, wide internally come into your mindset, your game plan. So you've gone from gathering information to your game plan. Okay, and then we set off. Okay, then we go to a narrow external and narrow external okay what's that first turn going to be like what's the snow texture like on the first turn is it icy is it deep is it tracked is it heavy is it crusty narrow external straight into the first turn maybe bringing that a bit wider am i going in the right direction etc etc so you can see every type of focus is useful but you have to get you used to moving through the focuses so if you can <coughs> now people that become great skiers arrive at this point anyway okay it's not luck they arrive at this point they've got a good focus they don't get overly nervous in a start gate they're not internalizing everything when they need to be focusing on what's coming up okay they've got very very strong skills in focus but if you're struggling if you're struggling then there's a reason, and it's probably to do with your focus. Now, we are to blame. Ski instructors are to blame for this. Why, you may ask? Because we are a distraction. As well as an aid, we are also a distraction. Now, think about when we're skiing. What do we as instructors do? We give you some information, and then we set off. So what is the first thing you're going to be doing as you're skiing down the mountain? You're going to be watching us. So you're skiing down the mountain, looking at where your instructor is. More or less all the time, if we're not careful, all the time. Now that can be fine on a blue run, or a nicely pieced red run, or a green run, where there's no hazards, you've got nothing to deal with, you can look at where your instructor is going. But imagine that the visibility has gone a little bit. It's snowed a bit. There's some icy patches. There's a small bump. There's some loose snow. If you're just staring at your instructor, you're going to see nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, we see this all the time. If you're an off-piece skier, even skiing on-piece, if you're an off-piece skier, where do most tumbles happen? And it's dangerous. Where do they happen? As the skier is coming into the group. Why is this? is because the skier has changed their focus from the terrain and the task at hand to the group. They've been distracted by the group. And immediately that happens, they lose control because they can't deal with the terrain. They're not dealing with the now moment. Okay, There are two, three, four, five seconds into the future, not now. So you've got to be aware of the group, but you've got to stay focused on the now moment. We see this all the time. Okay, If you are struggling, have a think about your focus. Are you over-analyzing things? Are you too far into the future where you should be on the now? Are you too on the now where you should be into the future? Okay. Are you not getting a game plan? Are you just arriving at a slope and skiing down it without actually, in off-piste especially, developing a game plan? Safety, hazards, snow texture, terrain, terrain traps, depth of snow, quality of snow. Okay, you've got to take on board this, this, all this information before you set off. Okay? Now, we have literally transformed people's skiing by developing their focus skills. It's not going to happen overnight. But once you're aware that focus is as big a skill as technique, as big a skill as technique, as tactics, as your physical fitness, develop it, get good at it, and your skiing will absolutely rock it, guaranteed. Okay, I'm gonna end there. Thank you for joining me. I'll put this up later so you can go over it in your own time. Um, just back to your ski, the ski instructor. Remember, if you're a ski instructor, what I've started to do these days is quite often told people where we're going and then let them go ahead of me so I come down either in the middle of the group or at the end of the group so they're not focused on me, so they can start using their focus appropriately. Look up, look down, go wide, go narrow, go internal, go external. Okay, Start developing those focusing skills and your skiing will literally rock it. Thank you for joining me.